Good morning, guys. We have skittish summer again. See how she like jerks? She's so she's so nervous. And I just like put my knees jumping on. Thinking here, she's just eating as fast as she can. I don't know if she does that because she thinks if she eats super fast, she'll be done. Easy does it. Easy. Easy, girl. Easy. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Different. Oh my goodness. for your baby. So, I talk to my animals a lot. I can feel her settle in once I start milking. And I don't know if that's... Because I know like when women breastfeed, breastfeeding releases... Um, ox no, I won't say... Uh, Easy. The good chemicals in our brain, causing us to relax, so it's more enjoyable. There's nothing enjoyable about, about nursing at first, because, wow, yeah, your nipples get sore. And I imagine it's the same with goats, how until you um, take, you know, uh, any portion of your body and you start touching it a lot and you know and in the case of like nursing sucking and some kids are not gentle trust me my daughter one of my daughters I won't say which one it's like a vacuum I mean I probably could walk around not even holding her just the suction would keep her on latch to me um, other babies not so much But, she will relax and calm down after a minute. She's still antsy. But you know what? This is still new to her. Right? Isn't this new, Summer? If your boy is screaming, he's fine. Trust me. Hey, 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 hey. I'm not going to milk you because you hey. Here you go. Here's some more wheat and corn. Don't step on me, please. You see the difference of how she stands where she's got plenty of whatever that she wants in front of her? Get some push it off. And when you go to touch her, she flinches. She's getting better. I mean, she's not like trying to jump off. Oh, you can hear CD shoving, shoving his green bin around. It's like, it's empty, woman. My green is empty. What are you going to do about it? He's not getting more. Not at all not getting more. Okay, I'm going to call that good for today. Okay? I'm going to call it good. Oh, your neighbor just drove by. Did you hear that car? Did that scare you? You don't have to be scared. I would never leave a goat in a stanchion unattended, especially a skittish one, like my autumn here, my summer here, just in case they do fall off. And we'll eat here. Let's take this with us. Do you want melon today or do you want carrots? You want cucumber melon? Oh my goodness. 
Yes, I do. I would like some cucumber chunks. Yeah, put some in with this. Come on, let's go get your baby boy. Let's go get your baby boy. I'm going to put this on pause. Come on. Come on, Otto. I got green for you. And I have gummies for you. Yeah, let's see. Come on. Come on. Come on. Autumn. Are you going to act up today? Oh, let's go. Come on. It's my phone. It's okay. I take pictures of you all the time. Come on. Come on. Right, I'll move it this way. How's that? Come on. There you go. There you go. See how a little thing just like me moving the camera there she was not happy with. Hmm. But I suppose so. Okay, this warm weather. Oh, it's not warm enough to not need a coat and it's too hot to not wear a coat. Or to wear a coat. Did you see that right? It's too cold to not wear a coat. And it's too warm to wear a coat. Now I suppose if my office wasn't heated, it'd be okay. This is my office. That's what I call it. I call it my, this is my office. This is where I like to do all my planning. In all honesty, I could stay out in the barn all day, every day. I really could. I am very, I love it out here. It's poopy, it's stinky, it's dirty, it's dusty. It's loud. Lots of animal sounds and smells. Do you not? Know okay. I like it. I like it a lot. My husband, not so much. But I don't make it come out very often. It wasn't his dream to have. His dream is to sit on the couch, play video games in an apartment. Where someone else was all the maintenance and the snow removal and the mowing. And the thought of that makes me lose my mind. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do with all my time? I don't like sitting still. So, for me, that's torture. That would be torture. And he thinks it'd be great, except for. Guess what I'm going to do when I'm bored? John, let's do something. John, let's go somewhere. John, John, what about this? John, what about that? He wouldn't have any peace. At least here, he can sit inside, play his video games while I'm out in the barn having a good time. He's having a good time. I mean, he does do more than play video games. His ideal, <laughs> his ideal retirement to be to revert back to his 15 year old teenage boy living at home where all he has to do is come to dinner lunch and breakfast he plays video games that doesn't sound like fun to me not letting me do the two-handed milking today. Neither one of you are. Hmm. I wonder what's up with that. What is up with that, my dear? Oh, once I've weaned the babies, we will try on um, my milk set, my cream, and milk, my cream separator I got for Christmas. Especially if I'm getting... Half a, about a half a gallon from this one a day. If I get half a gallon from her sister. Although I've been told that their dairy production uh oh, they're out of dairy, aren't they? Goes up after their on their second litter of babies. Is it a litter? Their second kidding. What's it call it? They're supposed to give more milk. Which is fine with me because I want to make cheese and sour cream, uh, butter, all those amazing things you can make. And stop buying from the store. The 
since I get the hay off my own fields, I know what's in it. I know that no pesticides or herbicides have been used. I wouldn't label it as organic because for organic it has to be so many years and I don't know what the previous people did that were here, that lived here. Um, I, had, I had contacted MSU, Michigan State University for their extension offices to talk about uh, see what kind of resources they had around here for like uh, studies on I'm looking for studies on let me get a hold of Minnesota. I'm looking for studies on variety in a hay and the not so much the protein content. I we've focused on the protein content in our hay. Um, and we're not and we've like, you know, does it have selenium in it? Does it have this in it? But I'm want, I, I'm interested in what mineral supplements are in a more native hay. Say because my first thought was, oh, I'm just going to have Timothy Fields, right? And then, you know, I got the goats. And I'd had goats before, and I'd read stuff, but I started reading more, having to do with the amount of milk you get when you have a dairy goat, and what they give them to produce more milk, or what they do to produce more milk, and, uh, you know, all the different aspects that people do when they talk about goats and milking. And see how she's all relaxed because I'm talking to you. And it was um, that I started thinking about everything I'd learned as a master gardener about, uh, take dandelions, for example. They grow in an area that needs specific sub, uh, nutrients at the top of the soil. And that's why they have such a long tap root. Well, that tap root, A, breaks up hard packed soil, like, you know, the clay and all that stuff. And then it also, because it's such a deep tap root, tap tap root is allowed to pull up nutrients and minerals from that have been washed down deeper into the earth so and that was specifically important in Washington because it's a temperate rainforest any supplements you put on the top of the no, I'm gonna take your coat off it's too warm for that um, the top of the supplements would get washed down deeper into the soil so dandelions would pull it back up and store it in their leaves and in their flowers. And then when they died in the fall, they would decompose and it would bring all those minerals back up to the top of the soil. So Mother Nature has a way of fixing, you know, deficiencies. So I wanted to do some research. I wanted to read some research. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to read some research on pasture um, mineral content, I guess is what you would call it. What is, uh, not just selenium, but what are the minerals in your pasture? What are, what are all the things that you need? Other things you need. <clears throat> Manganese and, you know, iron and all the other stuff that we give our animals. And goats are browsers. So, they don't normally eat just grass. They want to go out and eat sticks and branches and all that good stuff. So since I'm not going to have cows, I don't think I'm not planning. And if I do have cows, they'll be beef cows. Um, I started thinking about, well, what would be the best day for my goats? And I don't think that a straight Timothy hay or even a, specifically a straight alfalfa hay, would be the best hay for my goats. They get, uh, especially dairy goats, I mean, think about it. When you were, when I was breastfeeding, um, they told us to take extra supplements and to eat really healthy and, you know, to avoid certain things because it can get back in your breast milk. And so if you apply what they did to humans, and I'm applying that to my animals, so they'll be healthy at right, bottom thing. You want some melon? You do? Okay, I'll get you some. Was that your cup? Sorry. Oh my goodness, your babies are crying. Ooh. Anyway, so if you take that and you apply it to your animals, they'll tell you that you need, you know, what they need or what they want. So hence, like, 
when I can find produce that somebody's going to throw away at a grocery store or that's nasty, and I'll ask for it, and most of the time they'll give it to me, or they'll put it out in a box next to the dumpster. And I'm not telling you what stores do it. No, because that's my stash. Um, but uh, they, uh, I, that's why I give them all these extra little things like carrots and cucumbers and I check and make sure they can eat them. They really like cucumber. They love the carrots. They like the uh, dehydrated bananas are nummy, aren't they? And you can normally find cheap or giveaway bananas at grocery stores. So, but anyway, I was a, I was a little disappointed in MSU. I'm gonna get a hold of Minnesota. They might have something. Somebody somewhere along. I'm not the only person to think about this. So I need to find somebody else who's been thinking about it, so that I can give my goats the best hay field that they can. And I'm thinking it might just be a weedy field, which is gonna drive my neighbor crazy because you know. Cows don't do that well on that. But I don't have cows. I don't care about cows. My horses only eat local hay, and they're fat and happy. But they do have hay 24-7. All right, are you ready? You ready to go? I'll keep an eye on you. All right, let's go. We're going to go. Hey. Let's pull this out a little bit so they're not, like, zooming in your face. Come on, let's go find your screaming babies. Come on. Come on. Come on, love bugs. Everybody's a love bug to me. You still look kind of full. But you didn't let it all down. Come on in here. Come on, Mama. Oh, look at all these chickens in here stealing your grain. You need to headbutt them right out. So, there's my little spiel about hay. I'll let you know if I find anything. If you have heard anything about it, let me know. We all know that when you only plant one thing in a field, it, pr it, it really does promote pest infestation. It promotes diseases, specifically diseases that are prone to one specific breed or another, one specific species or another. Did I put your water in here? Yeah, I did. So, that's my little blurb. I'm just, I was not impressed with Michigan State. Not that, not that it was bad information, it's just not the forward-thinking, innovative information that I was looking for. And it wasn't even a, oh, that's an interesting thought kind of reply. And a couple replies I got was, oh, I don't deal with like fruit trees and stuff, so I don't know. Or I don't deal with that, so I don't know. Or talk to this person because I don't know. Very, um, very dismissive. Very, I don't know what I'm saying. Very, we know everything. You're going to find it hard to do. And this is, we, this is why we till. Okay, well, that's why you till. Not why I want to till. I don't want to till. I think tilling is an absolute, I know it destroys the soil structure. And without good soil structure, you will not maintain your minerals in your dirt, in your soil. So you can have soil or you can have dirt. You cannot have both. So with a good soil structure, matter of fact, all master gardener classes, the first chapter, the very first thing you study is soil structure and the importance of soil structure. And like the neighbor told me, well, we don't have a lot of erosion here. So it's just been something well, we don't have to worry about all of our nutrients washing away. So we don't, you know, we just till. Okay. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about fleas. So I don't think about ticks. That That's kind of the thinking that is. Or I don't have ticks. So I don't have to worry about fleas. They're two totally separate concepts. Do they overlap? Yes. Does one affect the other? Yes. But they're not the same thing. Erosion is not the only way that you lose minerals. And you can tell by a plowed field. Uh, last year when I went to the farmer downstate and I got the free corn, um, I told, I brought one of the girls with me that I went, you know, that's from the school. I mean, her mom and I are friends, so I didn't like pick up strange shit, kids. 
And uh, I asked her, I said, did you notice there weren't any weeds in that farmer's cornfield? She was like, yeah. I go, that's because nothing grows in his dirt. That's not soil, it's dirt. Because Mother Nature's modest and she likes to be covered. So if you don't have a way to cover her, she'll cover herself. And you won't like the way she does it. But I had enough of my lecture about that. It's 20 minutes. I got to go and get in the shower. We have school today. I will talk to you guys later. Let me know if you find out anything about any studies on like minerals in, in specifically a, a mixed hay field. I don't even know if people make mixed hay fields other than like Timothy alfalfa mix or a clover, you know, till it up, reseed it, throw on your, your pesticide, throw on your herbicide, throw on your fertilizer. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested at all in that. I would rather just cut it down the way it is and let them go watch animals when you throw them out in a pasture that hasn't been, that isn't a, a specific one, a monoculture, a mono, I guess you call it monoculture because the only thing they'll have would be with Timothy. Throw them out and think, see what they eat first, especially in the spring, because I know my horses and my goats head right to the dandelions. First thing they go for are the dandelions, which tells me they're craving the minerals that the dandelion taproot has pulled up to the surface. So, either I'm crazy or there's something there. I just need to find somebody who's paid attention to this kind of stuff or who's actually doing this stuff so that I don't have to reinvent the wheel all by myself here. Because the way things are going, we might not be able to get all those additional herbicides, pesticides, you know, liquid fertilizer to put on your fields. I know that your production does not go down far enough for you to make a difference. And that I've seen, I've, I think Joe Salatin was the one who was saying that he produces as much without spending all that money on that. Of course, he runs, he runs animals across it, and I don't want that many animals, but... Anyway, we're getting long-winded. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good day.